One of the things I like about preaching in the park or teaching in the temple is that you really don't know where you might go. You know, you start off with your own idea about your own agenda, what you want to do, and then you get there and you find out that you might do something else instead. Jesus had an interesting way of putting that. He said, you see the wind and you hear the sound thereof. You know not where it's coming from, nor do you know where it's going. So too is everyone led by the Spirit of God. Often we see, more often than not, our own ideas and plans and agendas always have us fitting into a certain regiment, a certain rigmarole, a certain box-like quality that's very dogmatic about the way we do things, how we do things, the way we should do things, and the way we want to do things. As a matter of fact, a lot of times, God has to interrupt the way we do things so that he could accomplish what he wants done. Most of the time, that's what we call, I like to say, intervention. Now, other people like to call them trials or tribulations, and sometimes they're even screaming and yelling about, you know, the devil did this or the devil did that. And quite frankly, I look at them and I say, hey, <laughs> uh, maybe God did that. Because <laughs> quite frankly, most of the time, I see people trying to achieve what they want to do as opposed to what God wants to do. And that's why we have to really trust in the Lord with all our heart, meaning not in our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledging Him and letting Him direct our path as being always something to keep in the forefront of our minds. We have to always think about that. We have to consider it, ponder it, and make it real in our life every day because otherwise we're going to create things about God we're going to make up things about God. We're going to interpret things about God rather than just let God be God. Imagine that, God being God. Now, the interesting thing I find out about God being God is that God made everything. Now, I don't know about you, but when I look at things, I don't see, you know, somebody's accidental freak of nature, you know, happening and something going, oops, I boo-booed, so you know what? I think I'm going to create this idea about how things came into being because I think that out of this little slime ball down here, something crawled out and decided that it didn't like being a tadpole anymore. So instead of being a froggy or instead of croaking, it wanted to walk. So it grew little legs and jumped up on the ground and started, you know, heading for the high country. Now, I don't know about you, but I look at nature and I say, of course there's a God. Of course God is God. So, because God is God, and because I take a look around and I kind of go, makes sense to me, I like to operate from that perspective. I like to think about. I like to talk about. I like to take a walk about with God. There are times where I have to sit down and get away from what people say because people are always telling me all kinds of things. They want me to follow some rigmarole that they got. They want me to do something they want me to do. As a matter of fact, they're always telling me how I gotta be or how I should be or what they want me to be. And you know what? I don't really know if I want to. There are times that I quite frankly I take a good look at what they're doing and I say, I don't think so. I kind of like the idea that, you know, I have a brain and I have a name and I have a mind and I have a thought process and I got ears and I got eyes and if I can see and if I can hear, then maybe I can figure out whether or not God is near or if God is real. Now I know that's kind of stupid because after all, if God is God, we can't figure him out, could we? If God is God, we couldn't be able to talk to him, now could we? I mean, he just would be too big. He'd be too real. He'd be too much of something bigger than what we are for us to even have an opportunity, much less a chance to even think that there's a God. Because, after all, he'd be our imagination. Now, I'll admit, if God is only in our imagination, then I imagine God doesn't answer. Then I imagine God isn't real. Then I imagine God doesn't come through. 
when he says he will or do what he said he would do. Now, that kind of God I wouldn't want to have because, you see, that would be someone I could figure out. That'd be someone I would know all about because I can imagine my own kind of God. I can create God in my own image. I can, as a matter of fact, invent that kind of God. Now, that kind of God I like because then I can manipulate him. Then I can make him fit into my own understanding. As a matter of fact, I can work it and I could twerk it and I could twist it and I could abuse it and I could use it to manipulate. It. Isn't that kind of what usually happens when you start talking to somebody about God? Somehow it seems like somebody, somewhere, is trying to get something for something. I don't know. That just sounds like a bunch of hogwash to me. Or maybe, in this case, river wash. <laughs> it just doesn't wash out for me. It's got too much slime and grime in it. You know, I kind of like something that makes sense to me. I kind of like to follow and to obey or to listen to someone who could be God or is God and in some way is able to prove it. Now, if God wasn't able to prove himself, to put it bluntly, I wouldn't be a Christian. Man, I'd say, hey, you know what? I'm hitting the high road because this Christian thing is too hard. It's all messed up and it's got all kinds of rules or regs. It's got all kinds of ways and do's and don'ts. And it's got all kinds of interpretations. And matter of fact, it's got all kinds of things going on. I don't understand. But if this thing about, you know, talking to God is real. If this thing about Jesus saying, hey, my father is real. I talk to him. If this thing about, you know, like Jesus saying that, hey, you know, um, your father in heaven wants to know you and he wants you to know him. I think that means that I can um, get to know him and I don't have to put my faith in something I can't see, touch or feel. Matter of fact, I can put myself into a place of understanding. I could get to a place of realization. I could come maybe to one of those, you know, kind of gestalt moments where it's like, hey, the light bulb just clicked on. <gasps> it was God. Wow, that's cool. Now, I don't know about you, but that's kind of what happened to me. You see, when I got born again, <laughs> boy, it was born again. Now, maybe for you, nothing happened. Then don't do it. You see, if nothing happened and nothing changed... And I dare say, maybe, you aren't following God, and you don't know God at all. But you see, if something happened, if something changed, then you're beginning a journey. Then you're beginning to learn something. Then you're beginning to apply something that maybe, just maybe, you might need to ask God more information. You know, kind of like, I need to find out a little more about this thing we call Christianity, because... I'm not getting the full picture here. There's some things that just aren't making sense to me. There's some things that seem to have worked, so I've been doing them. Some of them seem to not work, so I guess I need to quit doing them. But as long as they're working, I guess I should keep trying them. Because you see, Christianity is, in one way, a religious practice. It's something you keep practicing until you get it perfect. You know, you practice and practice and practice. And it's kind of like a religious observance, you know. Religiously, you practice it. Religiously, you do it. You kind of become religious about it. Because it is a relationship you have. It's someone you want to get to know. It's someone you're willing to spend the time and take the time to get to know in a more personal and intimate way. Now me, I wanted to get to know Jesus. So Jesus said, hey, I got a way for you to know me. I got a way for you to realize who I am. As a matter of fact, if you just call upon my name, I will reveal myself to you. But, I got news for you. I know you've been trying it your way, and you just don't get it that way. You got to do it my way, or it's the highway, because you've been on the byway for so long, you don't even know which way is up. I kind of like that, because you know, I'm not exactly the brightest kid on the block, and I'm not the stupidest. I know when I've been being dumb, and I know when I've been on the run. I know when I've got some smarts, and I know when I've really been stupid. So quite frankly, when God tells me, you know, hey, 
I got a way that's better than the way you're trying. I don't have a problem with that one. I just want to know if he's telling the truth or if he's lying. And that's kind of what we need to do, each and every one of us. We need to sit down and take this reality check about what we're hearing with our ears, what we're seeing with our eyes, and what we're understanding with our mind. Because it isn't about blind faith or stupid, you know, kind of like, Oh, I'm just going to accept it. Uh, yep, yep, I'm kind of dumb. <laughs> you know, no, it's kind of like, hey, I need to prove it. Prove me now herewith, God said, about one part of his character. And another part said, look, I will be found to those that suit for me with all their heart. You can know, you can prove, and you can demonstrate, even in a scientific module if you want to go that far. I mean, C.S. Lewis went out of his way to prove it logically. And he did. Other people tried to prove it mathematically. And they did. As a matter of fact, I can tell you some Jewish human minds, they even proved it theoretically. Yeah, they even got into dimensions, you know, got into this whole thing about how many dimensions are there. And they came up with it from Genesis. Now, I don't know how they did that, but, you know, that's such a Jew, you know, I mean, you know, a little negotiation, here we go. But anyways, the point being is this. God never expected you to accept things at face value because he knew you're stupid. <laughs> You look on the outward things, but God looks on the heart. God created everything, and he said, I'm not going to explain it to you. I'm God. You're not going to understand it if I did. But I am going to send someone who can explain it to you. I am going to tell you all about what you want to know if you're willing to find out who it is you think you want to know because there's only one person that I can tell you that actually does know what I'm about, and that's my son. I'm going to let you know that there is one authority that you can count on no matter what. I don't care about your Bible. I don't care about your Torah. I don't care about any other thing that you cling to or hang on to. But if you follow Jesus, you can't go wrong. No, 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 no. You'll be stupid if you find any other thing. Because guess what? They're always arguing from the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, they've always been arguing about what is or isn't God can or can't do. If God is God, then he's true. I think that means if he created everything, he's big enough to explain himself. He's smart enough to reveal himself. He's wise enough to know what I need to believe. Oh, Jesus. Ah, so it is personal. Yeah, so you're not admitting why you don't believe. I got it, because he got too personal. I get the story, you know. It's kind of what he did with me too, you know. It's like uh, when it got a little too close, too close for comfort. I dove in. <laughs> I was looking for love, but then I don't know what you're looking for. But if you want to prove God exists, hey, there's no such thing as an atheist. If you want to prove God exists, there's no such thing as an agnostic. Oh, they've already all decided. You're being deceived. You're being lied to. You're just being wasting your time and making up games and stories and logic bombs and trying to, oh, we're going to apologize for God. You know, apologetics, that's really what it's all about. I mean, apologia, if you really want to get into the word, is an apology and you're trying to create some kind of setting with which you're going to offer proofs and all these other things to prove to yourself that, you know, you can justify and rectify and qualify this whole idea behind your logical presentation of what you think the dissertation has to be about what God is, because after all, God can't defend himself. He's God. He needs our help, because he's God. That's not my God. You see, I have this funny thing about God. He talks to me. I talked to him. Funny thing is, he answered me. I answer him. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, that's pretty personal to me and him. Now, you may have to still yet try to prove, you know, whether you know God exists or not, but I gotta tell you, it's pretty obvious to me. I mean, I went over there and looked at that slime in that creek, and you may think that's where you came from, but that's not who created me. <laughs>